Welcome back to Come On Now, the podcast. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma with my amazing co-host, Nick Taylor, three-time Grey Cup champion. And we are doing a special today. What is that special? It is a response to the video that we were featured in as MMA experts by the UFC and Dana White this past weekend. Actually, it was Sunday. It was yesterday, right? Yesterday. Yep. And how we were told that we were MMA experts. Yes, he's, he did that tongue-in-cheek and trying to be sarcastic and condescending. But we were included with the likes of former UFC fighter Brendan Schaub. We were included with Ariel Hawani, who's one of the most well-known and respected MMA journalists in the business. Eric Jackman, Petsy Carroll, Brian Campbell, who's with CBS and does a podcast with Luke Thomas, who's a very well-respected MMA journalist as well. David Kent, AJ DeVito, and Lucas Tracy, and, and then Jesse Merle as well. So we were included with the likes of some great, great podcasts and reporters. And what was said about us, take a look. What's up, guys? As we rolled into UFC 300, uh, the MMA experts weighed in on what they thought of UFC 300. And for all the fighters that were on this card, when I said this is the greatest card ever assembled in the history of combat sports, this is what the media thought of you guys. UFC 300 makes no sense. Is any fight on this card 300 worthy? No. This is the most diabolically disappointing UFC 300 announcement ever. It feels kind of thrown together. It doesn't feel like the culmination of something big. We were continually told that it's going to knock your socks off. It's going to be amazing. What did Dana say about this right. We're going to blow their socks off. I wanted my jaw to hit the fucking ground. I did expect a little bit more from the company to blow us away. Nobody got blown away. Nobody. We need people that know the sport to be running the show because this is pathetic. UFC 300, the worst promoted fight card ever. Worst put together fight card ever. Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for the BMF title, which I think is the corniest nonsense on earth. Wei Li Zhang against Zhao Nian. China's gonna get all excited. And I don't think anyone else really cares. UFC 300 will be a disaster. Are you kidding me, Dana White? The most monumental card that there's ever been. You've had a whole year to prepare for this. Aren't you trying to make sales? Don't you want people to actually buy the pay-per-view? This ain't it. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a regular decent pay-per-view. Thank you, Dana White. You included us as MMA experts. What do you think of that, Nick? You know, I've been getting more and more into it because of Rudy. Um, I wasn't such a big fan, but um, I'm not the expert like Rudy. That's why Rudy's getting killed for it more than I am because I have I, – I let them know that my knowledge, I'm gaining it. So I don't weigh in as much as Rudy. I let Rudy have it. But it was interesting to see my, my beautiful face and smile. Wasn't it? That was Rudy. awesome, huh? On Dana's white uh, Instagram, and, and he Twitter. put it on. He put on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. It's everywhere on the U on UFC's. Uh, and and, on, and your part was um was quite highlighted as like probably the longest part of it. Yeah, the, so, yeah apparent apparently, um, you know, the comments that I made where I don't. What's the word? I don't. Uh, they, they're the truth. And my that, That's my feeling and still my opinion. It hasn't changed. To this day. What was that? To this, it will not mm. change. My opinion of this matter is the, is the same as it was when I said it. But the comedy of it all is that I said a lot of other stuff in that clip. And it wasn't included. So all it looks like is I'm taking a shit on fighters. And that's exactly how Dana White made it sound. He made it sound like the reporters and the podcasters were taking a dump on the fighters. I have incredible respect for mixed martial artists, fighters, boxers, th what they put their bodies through. I used to train in an MMA gym, um, watching those guys, the pros, they're incredible. They're at the, the athletic ability, the cardio, the work they put in. 
It is second to none. To me, it is absolutely the hardest sport there. MMA is the hardest sport there is. The, the gym that I went to, um, that was the gym. It was called Jocko, uh, where if people recall, that was the gym that had the t- ultimate fighter competition with American top team. And uh, that was the one that Kamar Usman won. Also on that, in, in that gym was Jason Jackson and uh, Tyron Sponge and, uh, and Rumble Johnson. I mean, Rashad Evans. This this was a big time gym. And yeah, I'm not a fighter, but, you know, I would watch these guys. It is also a gym and you watch these guys train and it is, it's grueling. So I would never disrespect a fighter. So I want to get that out of the way right immediately because, you know, when you, what the portrayal of that video is that we're taking a dump on fighters and that's n- ex- completely not the case. I would never take a dump on a fighter. Now, that said, UFC 300 for a year was being billed as the greatest thing on earth. It was being billed as the biggest card ever. It, the, it, it was pushed to the moon. In January, this event, this card had no main event. In the beginning of February, this card had no main event. So exactly how am I wrong when I say that this promotion of this event has been poor? It's been terrible. It's the worst promoted. It's, it, and understand what hyper, a hyperbolic statement is. It is an exaggeration. Obviously, this card is not the worst card ever. That's ridiculous. And obviously, it's not the worst promoted card ever. I guarantee you half the people that watch this or a lot of people that watch this don't even know who's fighting on Saturday at the Apex. Let alone if I ask you who was fighting uh, Alexandre Pantoja on May 4th at, uh, in UFC 301, you'd have no idea who it was. But you take this approach that um, just because someone has a big name makes them a great fighter right now. They may have been great fighters, but there are a lot of fighters on that card who are not the same person they were six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. So you're telling me they were Carl Malone with the Lakers? Basically, basic <laughs> for lack of better for lack of a comparison, yeah. And, and again, when they use this terminology of twelve former or former or current champions, let's really look into what a former or current champion is. We're talking about some champions that were champions eight and a half years ago. A couple of them, Holly Holm and Cody Garbrandt. Was Cody Garbrandt versus Devis and Figueroa a fun fight? Yeah, sure, it's a name fight. It's going to be. It, I expected it to be a, a a fun fight, but I also said in my video that I thought Devis, Devis and Figueroa would, would 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 knock him out. He dropped him and then he choked him out. And now I was surprised at the Holly Holm fight with Harrison because I thought Holly Holm fought about as dumb a fight as she could fight because she decided to grapple with the woman who walked in at 160 pounds and is still shredded. And, and and then Dana White, and here's what here's where it becomes kind of funny. Dana White then says Holly Holm should retire. Well, if Holly Holm should retire, why did you put her on UFC 300? Why were why was she match made to be on UFC 300 if she should retire literally after she loses to someone you brought in to win the belt? You brought in Kayla Harrison to become the 135 champion. Let's be completely honest. The question was, could she make weight? She made weight. I couldn't believe that she made weight, but she did it. And she had a great performance. And that's wonderful for her, but it was dominant. I, I look at the numbers as a whole. I look at numbers and I look at the excitement. As of February, they didn't have a main event. And then it, they had a main event. And they made it Alex, uh, Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. Great. That's a good fight. So it's, it's a good fight. Is it a... Oh my God, blow you away, knock your socks off. They were claiming for a year. No, it wasn't. It was a three minute knockout. And I, didn't I say that Pereira would knock him out quickly? Yeah. It's on video, documented. Am I always right about stuff? Fuck no. I'm not, I'm wrong most of the time. But on certain fights, you have a pretty good feeling. Did I expect Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway to be a fun fight? Sure. Do I think the BMF belt is still corny? Yes. Because it was created to, to hoodwink you and making you think that there was a real title on the line when Jorge Masvidal fought Nate Diaz a few years back. They created that belt because they had no title fight to put on that card. So that belt is now, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And you think Max Holloway really cares about the BMF belt? No, he cares about the real belt for which he earned a title shot because of his performance. That said, if he doesn't knock out Justin Gaethje the way he did, I don't know that he's getting a title shot from it. 
that touch people allow these oh my god moments and that was an oh my god moment and he was, made an oh my was, god it, moment it was amazing and it was amazing and i and amazing because he didn't have to he no. was winning he was a, he was going to win the fight he was going to be a he was going to win that fight four rounds to one on two cards and three to two on the other he clearly won the fight he in fact dominated most of the fight i, I mean i thought he kicked justin gaethje's ass I don't think it was a fight of the night. I thought the Alex, uh, Yuri Prohachka and Alexander Rakic fight was the actual fight of the night. It was the most competitive fight back and forth and it ended in the finish. But instead of praising your team and praising your, your, your staff and all that stuff, it's take a shot at media members and podcasters. Hey, I appreciate it. You, you, you've made us known. We're a brand new podcast. I am a journalist that I, I was a journalist for many, many years, and I have covered MMA events in the past. And I've been to seven pay per view cards in person that I've paid to attend. I've been to Vegas three times for, I, I've been to Vegas three times, Chicago, uh, Houston, Jacksonville. I've been to two in Miami. I've been to eight pay per views actually. I was at the, I was at UFC 299. I was at the Izzy Alex Pereira fight last year in Miami. So, and I've also been to a hand, a number of UFC fight nights um, around Florida, as well as local MMA cards, because I love this stuff. Yeah. So, I actually look at it from maybe a, a wider lens than some some fans do, mm -hmm. but I also know that I know what the UFC is capable of in a promotion because they've done it before, and I know what this was, and this was not the same. And when you tell someone it's the greatest thing on earth, I have that fight card realistically should have ended with Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, if that was the case. Because for the next two fights, the crowd was asleep. The crowd was sleeping. You open up with a guy who's got three fights. All respect to Bo Nickel. He may become a great fighter. He should not be on the main card of the biggest card in history. He fought a guy who will never see a, a, a main card again, more than likely of a pay-per-view. I'll respect Cody Brundage as well. But I'm looking at this from a perspective of you put the greatest possible, you put the biggest names with, for, with the most on, at, on, at stake. You can't sit here and tell me that they didn't want Conor McGregor to be on this card. You can't tell me that they did not want Israel Adesanya to be on this card. You can't tell me that they didn't want John Jones to be on this card. I know those people. Nick, who doesn't really watch, knows those people. That's who you, you do. You think if Conor McGregor's on this card, this doesn't do two and a half million buys? If you have a card that has Conor, Izzy, and Jones as your top three fights, I understand John Jones is injured. Conor McGregor's been teased with this Michael Chandler thing for two years. I know he had the, the Roadhouse movie stuff and whatever else, but. Again, Kamzat Chimaev, like polarizing figures, your biggest draws. You want those people on the biggest card ever. But that said, what I said wasn't not true. You may not like it. People may not like it. But I guarantee you, Ariel Hawani said the same damn thing. Brendan Schaub said the same damn thing. Brian Campbell said the same thing. These are well-respected people in MMA. John Tom, John, uh, Big John McCarthy said the same damn thing. These are well-respected people in the MMA community. Is it not true? Now, you want to come back and, and give revisionist history and say, oh, well, the card itself. So this is before the card. I stand by what I said after the card because my the way I view fights might not be how you view fights. And that's perfectly okay. That's perfectly okay. You may view fights. You may what you may love as a fan is to see fourteen knockouts in one minute. I'll tell you right now. If I spend a thousand dollars for a ticket to see fourteen knockouts in one minute, I'm gonna be very unhappy. See, see, my problem is that you come back with an explanation of how you feel. Now, you may not like it, but you should understand it because you given reasons of about how you feel rather than just say oh it was 
this because it's, you know, just because you want to say it. But no, you came back with multiple reasons why you didn't like the promotion of it and mm -hmm. how it was put together and the made up belt and, and things in that nature because it wasn't a real, you know, title out there for them to, to have. So you came back with your reasons and things in that nature. It wasn't like you just put it out there and like, oh, that's just, it is what it is. No, you came back with detailed information and, and, and the statistics and things in that nature on why, you know, you felt the way you felt. So when you do that, do that like in, in that type of way, I expect you to have a intelligent conversation back with me on how you feel differently. And we can talk about it. But when you just come and insult just because that's the only thing to do because you really don't have a real reason for it because that's the only way you can get back at somebody. That's, I mean, I ain't, I ain't with that, man. I'm, I'm all for it. Combat and, and talking shit about it, going back and forth with each other when it's intelligent combos. But a lot of y'all just just want to talk shit because y'all got nothing else to do, and then y'all hide behind fake personas and do it. I mean, you're gonna say something and be real about it. Have a real page, you know. You're a real person. Now have a real page. Why are you hiding for? If you're not scared, Come they're on. probably they're probably all friends with uh, some professional basketball players <laughs> who like to use. Um, you know, anonymous pages and to attack people. Whoa, and you whoa. know what? Did KD you know, just catch a straight? What? Did KD just catch a straight? No, nah, I'm just, I'm just messed. I, I mean, he does do that. He's admitted to it. But, yeah. I, I, you know, when people hide behind fake pages and, and, and want to insult, go well, insult away, man. I don't care. I'll go back and forth with you. The comedy is mm -hmm. when I go back and forth and you report my comment because you're offended now. Well, you're the one that started off telling me I'm a fat ball guy and, 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 and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, and, and one, one, hey, one of the comments, Nick, they want to punch you in the face for another video we did. I had to delete that comment because I'm like, that's hey, I ridiculous. See that one. You told I me about it. I, I took it down because it was ridiculous. It's like it, it, some comments that folks make I, I just are so out of line that it's not even worth keeping up there. But, you know, when, again, if, you t if I'm telling you, Nick, that this is the biggest card ever and in two months, it's in two months and I don't have a main event yet, how, am I, how is that a good promotion? How is that promoting something well? You, 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 they use all these statistics. They use the clickbait video. Great. We all do it. It's all, the internet's clickbait. If, if you don't phrase something properly, it doesn't matter how good it might, might come. It doesn't matter how good the content is. If you don't phrase something the right way in a title or whatever, if you don't have a large following, it's really hard to get seen. So yes, there are certain things that are done in a certain way. At the same time, let's, let's take a look at the stuff. I can, I congratulate the UFC, third largest gate. But let me ask you this, the biggest card ever, why didn't they do it at Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders play? If the WWE can put 150,000 people over two days to watch fake fighting, a scripted show, why can't the UFC do that for UFC 300? The biggest card ever, because they've done it before, Nick. They've done it in Australia, and they've done it in Canada. George St. Pierre was the main event in Canada. They did 52 to 55,000 at the Rogers Center where the Blue Jays play. And they did it in Australia where Ronda Rousey fought Holly Holm. I believe that was the fight. I, I think that's the fight where Holly Holm knocked her out. Um, I think that was. Don't quote me. I'm pretty sure it was. But that one had 55, 60,000 people. So it's been done before. But now for the biggest card ever. Let's go to T-Mobile. Why aren't we? And if it's sold out, why not? Why wouldn't you do it at a at the Allegiant, Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders play? Put 60, 70,000 people in. It's the biggest card of all time, right? Why didn't they do that? <clears throat> I would venture to guess because they didn't think they could sell it out or get close to it because they didn't have the main event that they needed, the main event and the co-main event that they needed in order to justify it. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. But if I'm telling you this is the biggest event ever, I'm doing it in the biggest facility I have available yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah. And that is Allegiant Field, where I have a roof. They have a roof there, right? So it's a dome, yeah. right? Um, yeah. a, a retractable, I'm not sure. It never rains. Sure. It never it never rains in Vegas. So um I, I, I don't see why you don't do it there. That's an opinion. Again, there could be logistical things. I know the Raiders aren't playing right now, so I don't know what the logistical things can be. It's not like the UFC doesn't own Las Vegas. The UFC owns Las Vegas. 
Beyond that, if I told you six months ago your main event is Oz Pereira versus Jamal Hill, are you blown away? No. Which is why it wasn't announced six months ago. Which is why they were scrambling at the last minute to make that happen. Now, if you look at the actual results of the card, I stand by what I said, but I also said some good things about fighters in that fights in that in those vid- in that same exact video that was chopped and, and used for us. Okay. But I said nice things about fighters and fights in that video. I never took a shot at any fighter. I would never do that. Do I think there are fighters that should retire? Sure. That's not a shot at the fighter. Like there are eventually everyone retires. And if and if Dana White can say after the fight, Holly Holm should retire. And he's her boss. That means well, she's right there. Why like can't she the, she was fighter? She, that means you didn't think she should even. That to me is like you. She should have even been in a fight. If yeah. you think she should retire, yeah, because that's a pretty. St- when you think somebody ser- should retire. When you think somebody should retire, that means <clears> that you think they're one blow away from getting seriously hurt because they can't even defend themselves anymore, or put up a, a good fight anymore because. Is that they don't have enough maybe power she or? maybe she was put in that fight to retire or that too or to retire her as it used to be all those type of things that's usually why you say somebody should retire you never say somebody that's good you should retire when you're good yeah. no. and and then they talk about like the most social media clicks for Max Holloway's knockout so if Max Holloway doesn't do that for you you don't have the most social media clicks mm, no no nothing, else. nothing. And and finally, they said it was like the highest whatever viewed in China. I, first of all, on Instagram, I didn't even think I didn't think Instagram was even illegal in China, so I'm not sure. But I also said that that fight should be in China because it would blow the doors off of any arena or stadium you have it in because of how big that could be there. But here, because it's of the not women. big, hmm. Because of the women. Well, yeah, but on top of that, part of promotion is talking. If you don't speak English, it's hard to promote. Yeah. It's harder to promote when people who are supposed to do all the talking don't speak English. That's what mm-hmm. made Conor. That's what makes Conor McGregor gold. Conor McGregor's gold because he is quick on the mic. It, it, he's quick on the mic and he cuts hard. I mean, he's a WWE character for Christ's sake. He's a promo cutter. I mean, and he's fantastic at it. That's how he can generate with Floyd 4.2 million pay-per-views, even though there's not a person on the planet that thought he could beat Floyd Mayweather in a boxing match. And if you did, you're dreamland. You, you, were, you were deluding yourself because there wasn't a person with logical sense that thought he could beat Floyd Mayweather in a boxing match. So you paid $90 like eight years ago to watch him get beat up, which is exactly what happened once McGregor, uh, Mayweather decided he was going to finish the fight. So, but all respect to Conor McGregor, he's a freaking marketing, he's a marketing mm-hmm. genius. And Dana White is a marketing genius too. He's built an incredible company. I love MMA. I, I, I support the UFC, but I can't sit here and have an opinion about something and say, I don't think it's the greatest card ever. Again, hyperbole, the worst promoted, worst, that's bullshit. Of course it's not. But for what it was supposed to be, was it promoted to the best of their ability? Not in my opinion. Was it was it put together in, to the best of their ability? Not in my opinion, because they had fights they probably shouldn't have scheduled late last year, and they should have been preparing specifically for this event. They failed to do that. They made some. I, I guarantee. I guarantee that there are things about this card that Dana White's not happy about, but he can't say it because he always has to say that it's the best card ever. Although he does take shits on fighters quite often after fights, in press conferences, he does take shits on them. But again, I did compliment many fighters prior to that prior to that card. And as I look at the card itself, was that Pereira Hill fight a good fight? No, it was a blowout. It was a three minute knockout. It was literally the first real punch Pereira landed that ended the fight, and he landed with like three knuckles. <laughs> Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje up until that knockout was a good fight. Was it the fight of the year? No, not to me. Maybe I'm hard to please. I don't know. I've seen better now. Add the knockout at the end, you've changed the dynamic. Yeah. But that only happened because Max is a G, man. Max is a gangster. Yuri, Yuri Prohoshka and Alexander Rakic was us was beautiful. I, I there's a lot of fights that I thought were, were good. There was like four, those four good fights to me. And 10 fights. Nick, do you enjoy watching someone get the crap beat out of them for, for 15 minutes? 
Uh, no. I don't either. I don't enjoy watching a guy get mauled for 15 minutes like Jim Miller got absolutely bludgeoned by Bobby Green. That whole, that's this whole shtick, shtick with the UFC and he's a warrior. He takes shots, blah, 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 blah. You never hear that on a guy that wins. Almost never. It's always, he got the shit kicked out of him. The warrior usually gets their ass kicked. Usually, not all the time, but usually the warrior who will eat a million shots loses. And I don't want to see the warrior be with CTE at 45 because he's getting pummeled at 40 years of age. Miller's Jim Miller's 40 years old and he looked like it. He should retire also. Realistically, the way he got beat up, that was hard to watch. People like that. I don't enjoy it. I like seeing competitive back and forth fights. That's my enjoyment. That is what it'll always be. So you can put the biggest names on the on, on the marquee. I've seen car you and, and if they're all wipeouts, I'm not gonna say it was a great card. People think that's great, more power to them. But I will tell you this, Dana White, I think we're very much similar in personality. I'm kind of an asshole. I think you probably would feel it. You are too. Oh, we got ball uh, heads. Ball headed people. Um I would ball headed people, y'all gotta do better. Y'all gotta <laughs> stick together. Why? Like there's so much bald on ball climb going on in this world oh. and it shouldn't be. Y'all have to stick together. Y'all probably got the same shaver and things of that nature. Y'all have to shave every day and a half. Come on now. Y'all should be bonding together over these moments instead of going at each other. Daniel White, I, I I think he's done amazing stuff for the UFC. I think it's fantastic. I but I think coming back at people and taking a shit on media or podcasters or what for having an opinion, I think that's ridiculous. Bro, you're worth a half a billion dollars. What are you worried about my sorry ass for? I'm nobody. Who are we? You're worth a half a billion or a billion bucks. Like, who cares what we think? We are up and coming. I mean, we are. We're coming. We're like Deion Sanders, like Coach Prime. We're coming. But, We're you know, more often than not, I'm gonna say good stuff about the UFC and the fight in the fights because I love it. Does anyone really know who fighting this weekend? No, not really. You know, I mean, just being real. And I and I will say this: if Armand Sarukian had such an impressive performance over Charles Oliveira, wouldn't he be getting the title fight versus Islam Makachev on June fourth? Uh, I think beginning of June. Maybe he turned it down because he's too quick of a turnaround for him. But I don't think I think he'd be crazy to turn down a title fight. I don't care. He just fought. He didn't take a lot of damage. He laid on Oliveira for a good part of that fight. Was stuck in guillotines and chokeholds, but he got the W. I just don't think they thought it was impressive enough to really push for him to take that fight. It's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong. But Dana White, you have an open invitation to come sit down with us on Come On Now the podcast, and we can chop it up, man. You have an That'd open invite. Hmm? That would be fun. Bro, I will fly to Vegas to do it if if that's what it takes. We could do it via Zoom. We could do it via our, our, our podcast program. Or we could fly. I'll, we'll fly to Vegas for that. So it's an open invite. Congratulations on a great event. Because at the end of the day, you probably made a lot of money on it. And it was very successful for, for your numbers and all that stuff. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to myself and change my opinion on the fact that I don't think it's remotely close to the best card ever. Did it have depth? Yes, it had depth because I said that. I actually com complimented most of the prelim card fights over the main event, main card fights. And I was very clear about that. So it had depth. Do I think it had a lot of meaning, a lot of those fights? No, I don't. Now, do I think the promotion of it was great? No, I don't. It doesn't change. But again, thank you, Dana, for including us with these MMA experts who I have great respect for. and. Um, we will see you soon, man. Anything else, Nick? Uh, no, we'll be talking more soon. We'll be coming out with a, another episode. We'll be diving into the Lakers-Denver. We'll be diving into all NBA, a little bit of NBA, NFL draft. Um, it's a good weekend to talk sports. And I, and I wanted to do this before our regular pr programming because I wanted to leave Combat Corner for this week. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Mm -hmm. Because our boxing aficionado, Donald, who is a classically trained boxer, he likes to call himself the classically trained. It sounds so sophisticated. You know, the classically trained boxer who, who loves boxing. Um, 
That's a I mean, my God, Ryan Garcia's performance was freaking wild. That that fight was crazy. Um, but yeah, we, we want. I wanted to save Combat Corner for for Don this week and let him go on. Want, you know, talk about it. So I wanted to jump on here with Nick real quick and and knock this out. But uh, thank you, everyone. Continue Come to subscribe. On Come on now. Continue to like, subscribe, and follow us. Say what you want. We'll always be here to, you know, go back and forth with you, man. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new...